Hi, in this video I'll be presenting different kinds of research designs. So in a second I'll explain what a research design actually is and then go through three of these four types of research designs. We've already covered experiments so I won't repeat that, um, but I'll be explaining what sort of the key characteristics of each of these research designs and what are the strengths and the weaknesses that are associated with each of them. Keep in mind here that the learning goal is not just to be able to say, look, this is how we define a cross-sectional design or a case study, but to, to give us the tools to assess actual research being done that we read about in a newspaper or a research article or a textbook and to assess the research critically and to consider whether this particular research design can actually answer the question that was asked. Um, this is what you also saw in, in lesson one, the example from 2018 exam case the question five with Brenda, and we'll be looking at that um, example again in the study cafe in the next lesson. This sort of this example quite nicely illustrates the kind of learning that I want us to, to draw from this. The research design concept can be contrasted with research methods. So research methods would, for instance, be to engage in qualitative interviews and, and, and rely on semi-structured interviews to collect data. And then you also make some decisions on how to analyze and code the data afterwards, for instance. Or it could be a decision to um, engage in survey-based research and, 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 and rely on regression analysis to, 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 to make sense of the data. These are sort of more specific decisions of the particular elements of the research that you engage in. Research design is an overall frame. So it's the overall decision for instance, to collect data twice, both in the beginning of your uh, of your project and, and at the end of your project and in order to compare whatever results you get. Or it can be the decision to engage in a randomized controlled trial and allocate um, a, a, a treatment to one group of people and not do that to another group of people. Or it's the decision to look at multiple cases in order to make sense of your research question rather than just look at one case. So these are some overall design issues that one might engage in. So it's not whether to include this variable or this case or, or, or a sort of si similar challenge. It's, it's again, it's on this more overall level and a study's research design can then tell us whether the evidence that one has collected is then actually able to help us answer the question that is being posed as unambiguously as possible. So we'll see in the following examples and the rest of the session uh, illustrations of this and, and how a certain kind of study, for instance, a cross-sectional study, might not always be able to answer the, the question that the researcher has posed. So this is the research design angle that we are looking at here. And a note also as said, stated here at the bottom, the choice and quality of research design very much depends on the research question. Again, I'll get back to that. And again, as mentioned, it's the three, these three kinds of research design that we'll be getting into. And, and the learning, again, is to be able to say not just what research design is in play in a given situation. So it's not just about identifying a research design, but also being able to assess the strengths and weaknesses of a given research design. And for instance, if a, in a, a particular case actually warrants, if the conclusion is warranted based on the research design that is in play. Okay, so let's get to it. Cross-sectional research design. It, the analogy is often this snapshot idea. You get, um, you get insights, just like when you take a photograph, you get a snapshot of what's going on right here, right now. So you would have more than one data point. You would, for instance, have data on 100 people at a single point in time. And you would know at a single point in time what their height is and what their weight is, or, or you would have insights on how motivated they are and what their education is and what their age is. And you want to find out, well, what explains productivity. It's really the core of many quantitative methods courses. So the aim is to explain variation. The aim is to explain that on average, which variables, for instance, this motivation, education, age example, which of these variables are associated with the outcome, with, pro with productivity. And we might find out it's in particular the education that one has and motivation that, that is statistically correlated with uh, the outcome with productivity. And what this then can do is to establish correlation. But as we heard uh, in a former video, correlation does not necessarily imply causation. 
we might not necessarily know whether it's motivation that causes productivity or whether it's because one is very productive that one is also very motivated to engage in a given task. It's difficult to disentangle what comes first because we only have data from one point in time. Um, to sort of elaborate a bit on this example and to highlight what we're going for. So we would have, for instance, some kind of spreadsheet with data with, with data on person A and person B and person C, etc. We might know their education and, 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 and motivation variables, etc. and then their salary or productivity. And then we can do some kind of regression analysis to find out an, on average how does different types of education, for instance, impact salary or productivity or whatever we're going for. We're not really interested in each individual person as such. We're not really interested in why a particular person chose a particular education, ended up with a job that landed him or her a particular salary. We're interested in the average variation that um, the associations between different variables lead to. So it's the average cause that we go and go. We're not going for understanding a particular person. But but again, when I say cause, we should keep in mind it's it's always cross-sectional. It's 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 difficult. It can often be difficult to establish that um, it's motivation that leads to productivity, and not the fact, as I mentioned before, the fact that one is very productive, which then leads one to uh, become very motivated as well. So this is then stands in stark contrast to what we call the longitudinal design. So in cross-sectional design, we would, for instance, compare 20 and 40 and 60 year old, and we'll carry our research in the year 2000, and we'll see whether each of these groups are more motivated or more productive or whatever our issue is. In a longitudinal setup, we would study, in this example here, the same 20 year olds in 2000, and then when they are 40 in 2020, and when they are 60 in 2040. We would study the same participant at, very, at various points in time. So this is really the key thing here, is we have data over time on the same people. We don't just have data on some 20 year olds, and, and, and in principle, we could collect data on other 40 year old a couple of weeks later. This is not what we mean. We have data on the same units at least twice as highlighted here. So we could, for instance, have uh, data on the motivation of employees at time point one, let's say in, uh, in January 2021, and then we could look at how motivated and productive they are in February 2021. This might enable us to say, well, it's actually the motivation in a prior time point that explains productivity at a later point in time. So this improves our chances of establishing some kind of causal connection um, because we can identify what came first. In a cross-sectional setup, we can sort of, in, because it's a snapshot, it's a picture taking at one point in time, we can't tell what came first. It's just, it's basically not possible, at least not if we just go by the data that we have. Um, in a longitudinal setup, we would be able to say, well, since we have data from two points in time, we can say that, that something comes before something else. So otherwise, longitudinal research can in many ways be the same as cross-sectional, it's just adding an extra time point. Of course, it can be, you can collect data from the same people every week for a year or every month for a year or every hour for a day, as long as you have multiple, um, as long as you've collected data from the same, whether it's individuals or firms or cases or countries or whatever it is, at multiple time points, which because this enables you to compare development over time and it, it, it will potentially enable you to say what happened in time point one is actually explaining what happened in time point two. We'll get a few more examples in, of that in, in, in this lesson four. And this can be done qualitatively, it can be done quantitatively by sending out the same survey multiple times, but it can also be an individual who actually observes a group of people over a long period of time, and this can also constitute longitudinal research. Then as a, as a third one presented here in, in this video, we then have what we call case study design, which is of, of quite fundamentally different nature. Here we are looking at some kind of bounded situation. It could be a unit in an organization, it could be an event, um, it could be a person. 
that we are uh, are following or, or multiple persons that we are following. And here we're really interested in the in-depth reason for whatever is happening. So before I said explicitly in the cross-sectional study, we wouldn't really care about why Peter did something. We just look at how various variables, for instance, the motivation and age and education of a bunch of people relates to their productivity. And we don't really care about the individual as such, only in the sense that we want to get to an average uh, result, for instance, via our regression analysis. While in the, in the case study design, we're really interested in the individual persons and why is it that Peter um, has the particular education and, and has this, why is it that, that he's motivated in the way he is and why does it lead to a certain kind of um, productivity? So we don't really care about the averages of a lot of people because, because we don't have data on a lot of people. Um, we we want to focus on the con this particular context, the unique context we're looking at. This case study design doesn't have just to look at one case. We can look at multiple cases um, and compare them. Again, we wouldn't sort of do any kind of statistical analysis. Usually we would, in a qualitative sense, try to compare differences between different cases. Maybe we have a unit in one country and a unit in another country and want to find out what the differences are between these units. Case study design can also be longitudinal. We can also follow a case over time and thus have multiple time points, multiple data points on the same people over time. But again, not with the aim of, of understanding some kind of average um, correlations, but, but understanding why stuff develops over time. So it's really how and why something is happening that we're going for. Typically, this could be interviews, observations, but you can also use surveys or archival data or other kinds of approaches. So whether something is cross-sectional design or case study, well, depends on what you're going for. Um, you, you might be comparing six, eight, 10, 12 different kinds of cases, but what, what answer are you, are you looking for? Are you looking to try to um, understand the, each particular case and what is particular about each case and, and, and what happened in each situation or are you going for some average variations and, 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 and sort of caring less about the particular context? So as, as mentioned here, then we can also have single versus multiple cases and, um, and there are some trade-offs and advantages of, of each of them. If you're sort of doing either single or multiple case study, you can read this paper that provides more insight into the pros and cons of each approach. The more cases you're looking at, the less in depth you can look at a particular case. I mean, basically think of it as, as a resource question. You have the resources to carry out, let's say 10 interviews. Well, you can do, you can take 10 cases, 10 individuals and, and interview them all once. You can look at five cases and interview them twice over a month or two, or you can take one person and interview this person once, 10 times, or for instance, once every week over a 10 week period. So it's all about how you allocate your resources. And, and the more you focus, the fewer cases you focus on, of course, the more in depth you can go with this particular case. So they're really trying very different things. Um, the cross-sectional study is doing this snapshot, while the longitudinal study is like the video camera that is, um, that is tracking how stuff develops over time. While a case study can be longitudinal, you can follow a case over a long period of time, but you don't necessarily have to. I mean, you can do a, a case study where you just go out one day, look at what happens in a company. And unless you're explicitly aiming for this difference between, for instance, 10 o'clock in the morning and, and three o'clock in the afternoon, we would usually call that one time point or something. You're going out there to collect data once and trying to understand that. So it becomes longitudinal the moment there is sort of something you're interested in over time. That, you're interested in, in, in differences over time. Something happened, maybe new employees were hired in the company that you're, you're observing or doing interviews at, and you're interested in how that changes their responses. If we can think of it in this qualitative case study setup. I've here in the following slides provided some answers to some, some comments to some typical questions I'm getting throughout the years. I won't sort of go through it and read it. It's, it's you can read the bullet points yourself and it's just the answers to some typical questions um, that I would usually get. And it's also related to some of the points that I've already talked about. And I've also inserted very sort of simple multiple choice uh, set up where you can look at these questions and the answers are on the next slide just to see if you're really getting the uh, the basic elements of this uh, of these different designs right 
So just to jump back to this slide here, in order to assess whether something is, for instance, cross-sectional or longitudinal, try to pay attention to how is data collected. Is data on the same persons being collected multiple points in time? Um, so it's not enough that you have some 20 year old and some 40 years old, you actually need the same people, uh, um, need to collect data on the same people twice. Um, so also a survey that sort of goes on for a week where you get one response from, from each respondent, just because the survey sort of takes, I mean, it can be responded to over a period of a, of a week, as long as people have only responded once and, 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 and this is what you're aiming for, well then it is a cross-sectional design. And um, in a survey, you would usually then only be looking at sort of average interactions between different variables is you will ask people, well, on a scale from one to seven, what do you think of this or that? While in a case study, you won't just want to get these very generic answers and, and, and generic sort of ratings, for instance, on a Likert scale, but you'll want to ask the person, well, what is it that you're thinking about this? And, and why is it that you made this choice? And, and what makes you rate this question in this way? So you really try to dive into the details of people's thinking. We'll get more good insights into sort of further challenges to, to various kinds of research designs, but also get a bunch of examples that makes a lot, enables us to get a better sense of what these different designs can do and what their strengths and weaknesses are. We'll be getting that to in the live session as well.